Sitting on the border of St. Louis City and St. Louis County is a beautiful tower, but what was its original purpose? Let's find out. Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to This House. And this video is part of our Secrets of St. Louis series. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. The current University City Hall building was built by magazine publisher and businessman Edward Gardner Lewis, a native of Connecticut who came to St. Louis, Missouri in the late 1890s, selling insect extermination products and medicines that were said to be highly questionable. He bought a magazine called Winner, based in downtown St. Louis, which was renamed Woman's Magazine and quickly built its circulation to the largest in the country, amassing a fortune in the process. In 1902, Lewis purchased 85 acres several miles west of downtown St. Louis. The tract, located near the construction site of the World's Fair, would become the nucleus of the streetcar suburb of University City. In 1903, with his publishing operation outgrowing its downtown location, Lewis began the construction of a new Lewis Publishing Company headquarters and press annex at this site. After incorporating University City in 1906, he served three terms as mayor, but Lewis's financial empire in Missouri collapsed amid charges of mail fraud, bankruptcy, and numerous spouts of litigation. And by 1915, he had moved his base of operations to the state of California. The magazine building briefly sat vacant until it was dedicated as the new city hall on November 1st, 1930. The octagonal five-story brick and limestone building was built in the bow arch style with a domed roof. It was designed by Herbert C. Shivers, a local architect who had helped draft plans for St. Louis's Union Station. The building features a marble staircase connecting the first and second floors, a central rotunda, and a large domed roof on the top floor that serves as the council chambers. Among the architectural details that have been removed from the building are terracotta cherubs along its roofline and a tunnel connecting it to a much larger Egyptian building. For the 1904 St. Louis World Fair, Lewis had the world's largest carbon arc searchlight installed atop the dome, 135 feet above street level. An 8-ton, 80-inch light built by General Electric in 1903, the searchlight developed at least one billion candle power. It was first illuminated on April 30th, 1904, opening night of the World's Fair, to illuminate and advertise Lewis's tenth city next to the Woman's Magazine building. After the fair, the light sat unused until it was restored in 1930 for the dedication of the City Hall. It was used again for the dedication of the University City Public Library, and then was neglected until it was restored and operated by city engineer Robert Norvell in the mid-1960s. It was relit on May 10, 1965 by then-Mayor Nathan B. Kaufman and has been maintained and operated by his son, Bill Kaufman, from 1972 until present day. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And a very special thank you to all of our members. I'll see you next time on This House.